Hello Mohawk! On this episode of MoCast, we find out about a new bursary that's been set up uh, in Rob McIsaac's name to benefit students from high-need neighbourhoods. Uh, we shine the spotlight on the Marinucci family, which has just made a significant donation to our Fennel Campus Renewal Project. And then we do a road trip, uh, hang out with some high-tech mannequins in the Learning Resource Centre at our health campus at McMaster University. Okay, so as we all know, Rob McIsaac will be wrapping up his tenure here at the college uh, at the end of January after five years. And we have come up with a parting gift for Rob. And to tell us more about that, I'm joined by Wayne Jowdry. Uh, Wayne is the president of the Mohawk College Foundation. How are you, Wayne? I'm awesome. Okay, so let's, let's get to the, uh, to the gift that we've created for Rob. What is that? We thought about what makes sense for Rob. Um, he certainly has, in many, many ways, transformed the college and transformed the lives of the students in the college not only from a, a physical uh, plant perspective, but in terms of opportunities for students, and I'm thinking particularly of our access initiative. So where we've landed is we're going to create a Rob McIsaac Future Ready Bursary for our access students, for our Code Red students. So those are students that live in uh, parts of our community uh, where they wouldn't normally be thinking about going to post-secondary. No one in their family has ever considered it, um, or they don't have the financial wherewithal in order to make that happen. Yep. As you've described it, these are students that have unlimited potential but limited means, and this gives them an opportunity to transform their lives and maybe their families' lives as well. We have a couple of um, uh, donors, one at this point in time that I can share with you, who's committed to a matching. Um, so uh, the Marshall family, who are wonderful friends uh, of the college in many ways. Longtime supporters. Yes, and I would say they are part of the family. Um, I have committed to $50,000 in matching funds. So if we get 50, they'll match it with 50, and that makes 100 toward the bursary. It's been an honor to serve on the Board of Governors and uh, over the last five years I've, I've been witness to many gift announcements uh, at the college. This afternoon it's, uh, it's my turn, it's our family foundation's turn. So on behalf of our family, we're proud to invest $250,000 in the renewal of this campus. So Mohawk is, is very proud to officially dedicate this space as the Marinucci Family Foundation IdeaWorks Research Lab. Uh, and John, once again, thanks for your, um, your, to you and your family for your leadership gift, and I want to thank you for your leadership to the college. Uh, on both counts, you've made uh, a simply magnificent contribution to our students. Uh, to our college and, and to this community. So we're here with John Marinucci and uh, John and your family, you have donated $250,000 to Mohawk College for Fennel Renewal. Uh, why did your family make that gift? Well, uh, we've always supported post-secondary education. Our foundation is really to honor uh, the memories of our, our parents who, who never could uh, 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 get a, a post-secondary education. Uh, they made darn sure their kids did and uh, and, uh, You're so a Mac grad. I am, uh, and uh, and uh, my experiences at Mac really transformed my life. My parents inspired me, but uh, Mac transformed uh, the way I was thinking. And uh, so, when it came time to uh, to uh, to honor our parents, we felt that the most appropriate way to do that was to make investments in in, in post secondary education by way of of uh, initiatives and infrastructure like we've done here at Mohawk or through uh, bursaries and scholarships for students who who maybe don't have the financial means to go to post-secondary but certainly have the desire uh, and the smarts. So we're here with Ryan Fletcher. Ryan, you are a freshly minted grad from which program? Software Developments. Okay, now you've spent a lot of your time at IdeaWorks. How long have you been a part of IdeaWorks as a student? I've been a part of IdeaWorks for the last two years now. Okay. And uh, so what's the experience been like for you? Oh, it's been absolutely wonderful, right from day one to today, everything, I've, I've loved absolutely everything about it. Okay. So what have you worked on in IdeaWorks? I've worked on a lot of electronic health related projects. Okay. So what does it mean, um, so when someone like the Marinucci Family Foundation puts their name on the wall in the research lab where you work every day, what does that mean to you? 
Oh, it means it, it means everything to me because I know without contributions like this, places like IdeaWorks could not exist. And I have gained so much for my education, for my career, for my IdeaWorks. It's absolutely wonderful when someone donates, donate, makes a donation like this. That bag is so ugly, isn't it? I can't I believe I gotta go it. home with that. Oh, oh. sorry about oh. that. Oh. oh, goodness. Oh. Hey. We're here with Barb Chesham. We're at the uh, Learning Resource Center at the Institute for Applied Health Sciences. How are you, Barb? I'm very well today, thank you. What do you do in the lab? My job, I'm a support clerk and I help book students in here for different labs and help with the equipment. Yeah, and today you are our tour guide, so other duties as assigned. What um, happens here at the Learning Resource Center? Um, this is primarily um, an area for all health sciences students. It's an interprofessional environment, um, so all programs will use this space at some point. Uh, they all have to learn a basic patient care course, uh, which includes vital signs, it includes personal protective equipment, um, and, and hygiene. Right. Now it looks like an actual hospital ward, was that intentional? Absolutely, yes. We want students to practice in here as if they were with real patients, so they can make mistakes if they, that's part of, part of the learning, um, in a safe way. Right. And why do, so you have mannequins, and I understand you have different kinds of mannequins. What mannequins do you have here? Yeah, we have uh, low fidelity ones, which is what these are right here, and they're primarily task trainers, which um, students can practice all the different skills on, for example, IV therapy or wound care. Um, they can also do injections on them as well. So you're going to show us how to inject one of these mannequins. Uh, yeah, that's right. One of these, this is one of many types of mannequins that we have uh, for students to practice. So what they actually have is uh, soft little pads in, uh, in areas where we would give uh, intramuscular injections, right? So uh, I've, we've already prepared the um, fake medication, of course, that, that we have, right? And so this gives uh, students an opportunity to um, practice, you know, actually administering and gets a little bit of a feel of uh, what it feels like to actually put the the uh, needle through. So you just uh, kind of swab the site here. My uh, bed was facing me. Okay, and I'm going to inject at the site. Going to actually aspirate to see if I've hit a blood vessel. Obviously, these mannequins don't have any blood or other fluids in them, but that's what we so teach. Nothing's students. going to gush at us. Nothing's going to gush at us. No. Right. But as a as a teacher with the student, we would explain, you know, what what would happen if you did see blood uh, come into the tube. Then we would have them explain that, you know, that's obviously um, we've hit a we've hit an artery or or, or something. So we want to uh, back out and proceed and and then so forth. And then we can actually just go ahead and inject. And as you can see, it goes right into the mannequin. Okay, and then out we go. Putting my safety on my needle. And You're feeling better already. Absolutely, for sure. That's what we do here. Here we have three high fidelity mannequins. And what these do are, uh, they interact with us. So go ahead and... We can interview the mannequin. Absolutely. Does the mannequin have a name? Yes, this is Mary. How are you, Mary? I'm not good. If you took this mask off, I could talk to you better. Okay, just give us a sec here. So do I just... Yep. I just there you All go. Right. Watch, watch the hair. Watch the hair. I just had my hair done before it, it came in. It looks spectacular. So, what are you in for, Mary? I had surgery on my bowel. And how did that go? Well, I just had it done yesterday, and uh, I had a lot of students come in and see me today, but nobody actually got me out of bed or anything. Right. So what's it like to play a mannequin day after day after day here at the Learning Resource Center? You need a lot of patience. Well, I am a patient, but you also need a lot of patience. Um, and it gets a little bit repetitive. But um, as, as long as the students are learning and um, whatever I can do for them, you know. And you get to lay down on the job all day. Well, yeah, true. But a lot of times I'm in pain or I need to vomit. That's the problem. Right. Day in, day out. And do you feel sick now? Um, with you gentlemen around, no, I'm feeling much better. I'm not allowed. Just in case. Can you just put that right on, right in front of me, like right on, on. yeah, thank you. So here we are now in the simulation booth, and we are with? Tanya Linnington. 
Okay, now you get to spend your day pretending that you are a sick patient. That's a cool job. Yeah, it's one of the more fun jobs that I've had for sure. Yeah, it's great interacting with the students. And so what, uh, what would you simulate uh, for students? Um, a lot of times we simulate um, different types of surgeries, patients post-op, so there's a lot of moaning, groaning, vomiting. Um, sometimes we simulate being confused, so that's always fun for us to do too and hard for the, the students. I could do that role quite easily. It depends on the day, that's right. Right. Yep. And what's the, um, so of all the patients that you get to play, what's the one that you enjoy most? Probably the confused um, elderly client, uh, post-op when they're not quite sure where they are, when they need the students' help, and that's when the students can really engage, which is a lot of fun. Right. Have you ever thought of a career in voice acting? No, and that's why we have the machines to do that for us, so that's the, that's the great part about this. It's a little bit of us and a little bit of the machine too. Right, so how much, like what can you program then? So I, obviously you program situations for the mannequins. How many do you have? We have three mannequins that we work with within these booths where we can talk through them. So with the students hear our voice through the mannequin's mouths, it, it, it looks like to them anyways. Okay. Do the yeah. students ever know that it's your voice? They can tell sometimes, and sometimes the first time they ever go into a simulation room, they, um, they start giggling and, and because they recognize our voices. But once they get in initiated into that scenario, they do forget and they, they role play just like we do. So how realistic does it get for our students? I think sometimes it can be very scary when they have a situation that they're not sure of and they've got a, a, a peer with them, but still there's no teacher there to um, prompt them as to, as to do uh, or to what to do next type thing. Um, I think sometimes it can be very scary. The mannequins are fairly realistic um, in that their, their um, chests can rise and fall. Um, they don't blink or have any facial expression, but we try and initiate that with our voices. Right, and you record all this for, like, what, what's the purpose of that? The purpose for recording is more for the students to learn from what they've done right and what they've done wrong. Sometimes when they're in that situation, they can't remember little bits, but when they see themselves, they're like, oh, I remember doing that, or I remember not saying that, um, and then next time they, they can correct their mistakes. Mm -hmm.